The word haptic is a, a difficult word, and it's a word that um, at times has gotten me into lots of trouble. But um, it refers to your sense of touch. It's, it's um, from the Greek word for touch. And our sense of touch is very complex. It's our sense that extends and includes lots of systems. It's the surface of your body. It's your entire skin. You have more nerve endings in your feet than in your hands. Um, the other fascinating things about haptics, it um, is how you experience hot and cold, like we were all shivering today as we waited to get inside. That's part of your haptic system. Um, it is related to pleasure and pain. It um, can be extended, and that's really the fascinating aspect of haptics that I explore in my work. And how you extend haptics, like a, like a blind person using a cane, the tip of that cane becomes your sense. And I first started studying this while I was an uh, architecture student at the University of Michigan. And my mom had just been diagnosed with glaucoma and macular degeneration and a bunch of other eye issues. So I was confronted with, you know, my mother becoming blind. And, you know, when you see someone you love suffer in that way, um, I realized as a designer how much we privilege the visual over everything else. And that, as a designer, we should really, you know, try to dig deeper and start to explore another context, you know, something that's tactile, something that's physical. And that's really an expression of what I make. And one of the first things that I did when I was engaging with these ideas was created quilted maps. And the idea was the quilt would be used as a wayfinding tool for the visually impaired. Um, obviously, it's become much more than that. but. You know, in my studio, we use things like open street maps. We use, you know, digital resources, GIS data, satellite imagery to create these textiles. And in a way, it's combining a digital sensibility with a craft sensibility that I learned um, growing up in rural Wisconsin. So for me, making is less about, you know, relying on one skill set, relying on, you know, craft and a physical making but also combining that with digital technology. And I think one of the conceits of digital manufacturing processes is that we rely so heavily on the, the making of that, like, uh, like for example, like when I was in school, everyone was sort of obsessed with these new 3D software programs. And we got really good at Rhino and Katia and these sort of very complex systems, but it's all happening in a void that doesn't have rules of physics applied to it. There's no gravity in the three-dimensional space of your computer. Um, and, you know, rapid prototyping techniques are really just a kind of hand-me-down of the aerospace and, you know, automotive industry. And you can't just one-off something. You can't just 3D print something and say it's a complete finished piece. This is my op opinion. Like, <laughs> I, I, I'm on my soapbox now, so I get to talk about it. But I think that as designers and makers, we really need to find ways to complete these, we need to, to take digital and physical ways of making and combine them. Um, one of the things that I'm really interested in, um, apart from quilt making, is kite making. And it's hard for me to explain like how kites and quilts relate, except that a kite is sort of the most haptic object that I can think of, where like you are flying this thing in the air and you're holding it in your hand and as the kite moves through the sky, you have this physical connection. You get to experience the sensation of flight, of flying. Um, and kites are very serious business. They, were, they weren't children's toys until very recently. Um, they were used in military um, scientific experiments. And so, you know, through my work, yes, it's very whimsical and playful, but it's also very serious in a way. And I think that, um, you know, to have a kind of context that's, um, 
inspired by a, a deeper kind of research methodology is important to what I do. Um, but in, in making, I, I know you're all like creative people and work in creative fields. And I think like the sort of takeaway that I'd like to share with you is to, you know, don't, <laughs> again, don't, don't just like one-off things and like seek inspiration from, from your backgrounds, you know, whatever that is, like your childhood, your, you know, the environment you find yourself in and connect them. And um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> All right, thanks.